Welcome to the TrikeCast, where IT training is free for everyone. My name is Andrew Krauthammel, and today we're going to go over how to block a website uh, from your users uh, through a few different ways. So the easiest way of doing this is if your SonicWall is licensed uh, with the content filtering uh, add-on or the comprehensive gateway security suite, or if you purchased your SonicWall uh, new uh, with the total secure package then you'll you'll have this feature so we're going to go under security services and we're going to go to content filter and again this won't show up unless you are licensed it'll it'll say you have to purchase this otherwise uh, so and some of the older devices you know you may not have this uh, this license for it so we're going to go under our content filter service which is your default service that's uh, created for you by default from SonicWall and right here uh, now these are defaults usually but make sure that this is checked off if URL is marked as forbidden block access to URL and then usually you want to log it as well so that you can go back and uh, yell at whoever it was uh, who was accessing the URL so make sure these two are checked off. We are going to go under custom list and for forbidden domains we're going to add a forbidden domain. So for example we could say facebook.com and click OK and it would add that in. Now I'm on a live demo uh, on an NSA 2400 on the live demo site so this is not going to be successful as you can see demonstration mode but your facebook.com would show up in the forbidden domain section so there's nothing else you have to do at this point you can go under the policy if you want to and modify your policy and change the categories you want to block by default but these are the these are the default categories that are blocked pretty much all of the stuff most corporations want blocked anyway. Uh, hate sites, pornography, cult drugs, stuff like that. Most of these things any any corporation doesn't want on their network. So uh, you can uncheck these if you want to be more liberal with your internet use policy or you can check even more things and block even more by default. Uh, but nonetheless that's the default policy that will be in place along with whatever forbidden domains you have. So you're going to go ahead and click OK. It will apply that change and then all you have to do is go under your zones and make sure the content filter is enabled for your LAN zone, which it should be by default. So if we look under here for our LAN zone, content filter is checked off. So it is set. And then it has the that default policy that I was referring to uh, applied to it. So if it's not, you can go in, edit that, check off content filtering, and then that will show up for you. Uh, the other way, if you do not have that licensed, is you can go uh, and make a firewall rule. So this is not the preferred way of doing it, but it's one of the ways to do it. It doesn't block everything all the time. It's it's because it's based on you as the admin to try and find out all the different domains and IPs and, and such that are required for someone to access a website. It's a little bit more difficult sometimes depending on what you're trying to block, but this is also one way of doing it. Uh, we can go under address objects and make an address object for the website that you want to block. So we can go in and add, we'll call it Facebook. Zone is going to be WAN because it's on the internet. From our perspective, it's, it's on the wide area side of things. And we're going to make it a fully qualified domain name, FQDN. And then here we can say Facebook.com. And then you'd go ahead, click Add, and that would add that into your object list. So that would show up down here. At this point, we can create a firewall rule to block that. So you would go under Firewall, Access Rules. And then we're going to add an access rule from the LAN to the WAN for the Facebook address object. <coughs> So we're going to go from LAN to WAN, any service, although 
although you could probably say HTTP and HTTPS and, and make a group for it. Any service will cover, obviously, anything. And we're going to go and select our source, which is our entire subnet and our destination. So here's in our destination is where we would select our object for Facebook.com. So in here, probably in the middle here somewhere, or at the bottom, depending, uh, you would see Facebook, the object that we created. So we can pretend, pretend that's it. Uh, and then up at the top there, change the allow radio button to deny, and then that will deny it. So you can say block Facebook. At that point, you can go ahead and click Add, and then that will block Facebook for all users. So that's two ways of, of doing that. You can also do that with uh, Application Intelligence uh, app firewall rules, uh, and I'll be going through some of that uh, in the future in a separate video specifically about Application Intelligence. Uh, but that's for more advanced setups. Most people don't have that right uh, as of yet. Uh, so these are the two most common ways of going about blocking websites such as Facebook or Twitter or whatever you might want to uh, get off of your network that doesn't fall under one of the default uh, content filter categories. And uh, that is it for today. It's a quick, uh, quick one today. So in the future I may have some uh, interesting lab environments set up. Uh, so look forward to that. And if you enjoyed these videos, please like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, look back here for uh, every week for a new video. And check out andrewkrauthamel.com for other uh, blog entries of mine about uh, IT and security and networking in general. Thank you for viewing, and I will see you next week.